Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Mary's, the Timothy, not the Timothy Parish. We are happy that you are here to worship us, with us this Sunday today. In a particular way, we welcome anyone returning for the first time in a while. Anyone who is new or visiting, you are most welcome here. We have some announcements to share with you today. Please continue to wear your mask or our face covering on the duration of mask. As you enter the church, please continue to follow the social distancing protocols. We also remind anyone, everyone, to avoid gatherings in groups following the mask. Please feel free to say hello to our celebrants on the path. But please keep moving to allow for a proper social distancing and after doing baskets have been placed in the vestibule of the Union Church. At the side doors of the Mount Main Church and outside and the sound system speakers the record line. The general support is really needed and appreciated. Please consider signing up to receive a monthly prayer for the priest calendar for the priest of the High Diocese of Boston. See the rotating banner on the website for more details on how to have calendar emails each month. Adoration of the Blood Sacrament will be held every Monday and Wednesday evening from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the main church. A priest will also be available in the sacristy for confession each night. Confession is not face to face. Please remember to wear a mask and practice social distancing in the main church. Thank you. Next Saturday, October 17th, the 4.30 Mass will be an installation Mass for our new pastors, Father Anthony and Father Matt. Please join us for this parish event that celebrate our new pastors. Please note the preparation for cold weather, knowing that outdoor seating will not be available much longer. In conjunction with the start of religious day, classes, we'll be adding another Mass each Sunday 4.30 p.m., beginning on Sunday, October 25th. We look forward to this additional Mass now. It hopes, it hopes that we will provide another opportunity to Mass, which will assist with social distancing. The parish offices are closed on Monday, October 12th, observation of Columbus Day. Today, the church is observed the 28th time, Sunday, on every time. Eucharist is being offered for Jose Fontes. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the last thing. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
How is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a young man who makes music named Justin Bieber. Perhaps you've heard of him. Believe it or not, Justin Bieber has a song right now called Bully, in which he describes the love between a man and a woman as something holy. And lest you be tempted, as in fact I was, to sort of dismiss it as kind of a, you know, an exaggerated, colorful language having nothing actually to do with God, the song is actually filled with references to God and to the Father coming to the water and running to the altar and all these things. It even says, uh, we know that we believe in God and that God believes in us. And so we hear in the Gospel today this image of the wedding banquet. It is an image that we hear throughout Scripture in many different contexts. And we're reminded that it is the image ultimately for heaven itself. That heaven is that eternal celebration, that eternal joyful celebration, which is always centered on love. And that that is what heaven will be like. We forget, I think we forget, that God is not opposed to love. He is, in fact, the God of love, including the God of romance. And that the love between a man and a woman in the sacrament of marriage shows us something of the love of God. That when we see married couples and their fidelity and their love and their commitment to each other, we should be reminded of the love of God. Because that love between a man and a woman in marriage is indeed something holy. And when we think about heaven and living a life of holiness, we tend to think it's kind of boring, like it's kind of like these images of saints which are perpetually praying all the time, and kind of clouds and angels playing little harps and all this kind of thing. We forget that heaven is the most joy-filled, love-centered celebration that there is, and that the union of a man and woman in marriage is but a walking, living, beautiful picture of the union, the loving union, we are made to have with God. And so heaven is described very deliberately as a wedding banquet. And moreover, every time we go to Mass, the Mass is described as a wedding banquet of the Lamb. Because it is at the Mass when we are fed with Christ Himself, with that God of love, with that source of our heart's deepest desires. And so it is in the Eucharist at every single Mass that we experience that little taste of heaven, now, here on earth. But, the Gospel also reminds us, God extends this invitation to us, to the wedding banquet, for us to accept or to reject. He leaves us free. We hear in the Gospel of those who reject that invitation. We hear in the Gospel of those who try to accept the invitation. But it says they're not, they're not dressed appropriately for the wedding, meaning kind of an image of those who would uh, profess God with their lips, would express that desire for God and for heaven, but who live lives contrary to Christ. And so we can't profess God out of one side of our mouth and then live a life contrary to Him with the rest of our life. And so this image of the banquet and of that invitation that goes out is the same with heaven that we are inviting that God extends that invitation to all of us, but it is up to us to accept that invitation or to reject that. God does not force himself on us. And so at the end of our life, we will have made an ultimate decision to accept God or to reject him. That's what heaven is. It is the presence of God himself. Hell is the absence of God himself. And if we've spent our life rejecting God, at the end, we simply get what we choose, not because God is vengeful and wrathful and likes to arbitrarily say, you go here, you go there, 
but because we get what we choose. And so sometimes taking our eyes off of that wedding bed when we get a little too distracted by the world around us, and we think perhaps that heaven itself or the life of the saint or the life of holiness is something that is boring, stagnant, not relevant. We forget that God is the God of love, that His holiness is inseparable from His love. And so a life of holiness is not the life of someone who's bored. The saints were not bored people. They loved the most. They loved with all their hearts. I was, okay, I've definitely shared this at other masses. I don't recall how detailed it had been at this particular mass, but I myself was uh, discouraged from embracing my vocation as a priest because of my desire, quite simply and honestly, to be married and to have my own family. But what I realized was that I wanted to give the world, if you will, if you will allow me to be dramatic a little bit, the love that everyone needs. And so everyone needs that love of Christ. And I realized that I wanted my life to be that sign of that love that is totally given over to God. And that as beautiful as that love of marriage is that God gives us, that it is a sign of our love the men, that, the, that we're meant to have with God. And I wanted to live that out in a different way. I wanted to live that out in a way that reminds me with my whole life the love that we are truly made for. That as beautiful as the love we experience on this earth is so much more beautiful, more passionate, more intimate, more exciting, more joyful, is the love we're meant to have in Christ. And I realized I wanted to spend my whole life pointing people to that love. And so it is to that love, to that life of holiness, that God invites each and every one of us. He invites you today to accept his invitation of a life of holiness. Not a life that is boring, but a life that is filled with love and with joy in this life and in the next. And so as we again approach the wedding feast of the Lamb again today, and as we receive that God of love for ourselves, let, his, let us ask him to, to make our hearts holy. Because he continues to offer us the invitation to follow him to live that life, and to come to the wedding day. It is completely up to us whether we accept that invitation or we reject it.
of the church, that we may be a fruitful God, producing the harvest of rich in justice, compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. Pray to the Lord. Lord. That God will direct the minds and hearts of those in public office, the true peace and freedom for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who lack like meaning, purpose, or good direction in life, that Jesus will draw close to them with his love. Let me pray to the Lord. Lord. For the grace of this week, to have great faith in Jesus and an eagerness to serve him, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for all the children who this weekend, for the first time, receive our Lord and Holy Communion here at St. Mary's. Mary Jesus, may Jesus come to the house. May you love him with all the hearts and live faithfully forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who are ill, especially President Trump, First Lady Melania, and all who have asked for our prayers, may God healing love touch them, restore them to the fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For our beloved departed, especially our Adams, whose funeral mass was celebrated this past week. Walter J. May, whose funeral will be Tuesday at 10 a.m. in Edward L. Dre, whose funeral will be Saturday at 11 a.m. J. L. Murphy, Robert Murphy, and also, for whom this mass is being honored, May Jose Santa Fuentes, whose mass is being honored, May they know loving embrace and all merciful power. We praise the Lord. Lord. We praise the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, look with kindness on these and on all the prayers that we offer you. We do so in union with our blessed Mother Mary and in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Lord. Accept the Lord the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of God through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the past ministry. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize you the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your Son. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained to be your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth to the Mass of heaven. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give you the humbly prayer. And do thou, O Prince of Heaven, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil.